Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. Today's video is the first video in a three part series in which I show you how to master inside of Studio One 5 and how I set up my sessions for mastering inside of Studio One. Hi folks, Smudge here and welcome to Mastering in the Box, your home for simple guidance on digital mastering and digital audio. In today's video we'll be starting a series all around mastering in Studio One 5 and I'll be showing you my mastering setup and how I set up mastering sessions inside of Studio One. In video two I'll show you how to apply some basic mastering processes inside of Studio One 5 using stock plugins. And then finally, in video three, I'll be showing you how to use the project page for metadata, file exporting, and all of that goodness. Videos one and two will apply to the artist versions of Studio One, as well as the professional versions, but video three will apply to the professional version only, as we will be using the project page feature for all of the metadata and file exporting. But before we get into the content of today's video, if you want to know more about digital mastering, then make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tick that bell and select all to receive notifications on all of our videos moving forward. And if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support the channel, then please see the links in the description down below. When it comes to mastering inside of Studio One, there are a ton of great features that lend themselves perfectly to mastering. And whilst in the professional version of Studio One, we have the project page feature, I actually prefer to utilize the song page first as it allows the maximum flexibility in the processing of the songs. A few features that aren't accessible in the project page at the moment include macros, event effects, volume automation, clip gain envelopes, and mixer scenes to name but a few. But the project page is amazing for the final file arranging, metadata, and exporting so I will highly recommend a hybrid setup between the song and project pages. So my first recommendation is going to be to create a basic mastering template. But a top tip before we do, render all mixes to a single stereo file and set up a new session. Because this is going to help separate the mixing and mastering processes and allow for more focus on mastering as you won't be tempted to keep going back to the mix and tweaking things. Step number one is we need to set up a new song session in the song page. Not the project page, we'll use the project page later on, but we need to create a new song. And just make sure if you create a new song, you need to make sure that the song length is sufficient for all of your songs. This example, I'm going to import four song files at roughly six minutes a track. So let's do 24 minutes. And I'm just gonna put this as mastering session example one okay and now we have created a simple song page step number two we need to undock the mixer so if we press f3 to open our mixer and you'll see here that we've got the mixer docked at the bottom of the screen for me personally i don't like this because i want to set this up as a new mastering template so we click this little arrow in the left hand side here to detach and then what we want to do is resize this so it goes full screen mode, and we want to drag it so the master is over here on the left hand side. Now the way that I set this up is to then step three is to resize the mixer and then move to the right hand side of the screen. So the way we do this is literally by dragging the left hand side and moving it all the way to the right. Now you'll see when you get to this stage where the instruments column and the channel and group column when they start to meet the master, it starts to move the master. And we can sort that out by clicking the instrument pane and this pane, the channelist pane here, and it removes those columns, which then will allow you to move that all the way across to the left hand side. So now we have the mixer undocked and we have the master channel on the right hand side of the screen. Step number four is we need to go into the console settings and untick the box labeled link visibility of track list and console. So we do that by going here in the mixer and you've got this wrench icon. If we click on the wrench icon and you can see here under visibility, link visibility of track list and console. 
Make sure that is unticked, and I'm going to show you why in a second. The next step is to open the track inspector, and simply we do that by pressing F4. And we now have the track inspector opened on the left hand side of the screen. I prefer to have this event section here around about halfway up the, up the page, but you can use this as your preference when it comes to setting up your template. Now, this is going to be the basis of your mastering templates. So once we've got the mixer lined up to the right hand side of the screen where we want it, and we've now got the track inspector open, we've got the options selected as we see fit. If we then go into file and save as a template, we can now save that set up as a new template inside of Studio One. So what this is then going to do, if I click OK here, I'm going to replace this. Yes. If I then close the mixer, if I then go to start, and next time I want to create a new mastering session, if I click on new song, then you can see here we then have a user template for mastering session example one. And we can now use that as the template for mastering moving forward. So now we have the basis of our mastering template set up. The next step is to import the songs into the song session. So we can do this by clicking the song tab at the top of the page. And we've got the keyboard shortcut here, which is Control, Shift and O to import files. So if I click on import file and I want to select the top four songs here and then click on the open and it's then going to import all of those songs into the Studio One song page. So now we've got the songs imported into the song page. One of the things I like to do next is just to tidy up the mixer console. So if I just drag this left, you'll be able to see here, now we've added the four songs into the main, into the main channel editor. We've now got four tracks shown in the mixer. And I don't like that. For me, it's an unneeded step. I don't use them because we've got the track inspector here. So for example, if I want to add an insert, I don't need to add it here because I can add it here. If for whatever reason I did want to add a send, not that I ever do in mastering, I can do that here. But if I also want to add any event effects, I can also do it here just by clicking this enable and I can then go down here and add an insert this way. Or with all Studio One uh, versions, you've got the drag and drop. It's so such an easy thing to do. So I don't really need the channel list to show the channels. So the way that we can make sure they don't show is to go into the channel list settings. So if we go into the console on this pane here and click the bottom one, it's then going to show us the channel list. And we can just untick these little dots here and you'll see that the channels have now vanished. Okay. If we go into back to our settings, if we didn't untick this box that says link visibility of track list and console, what would actually happen is it, when I untick these, it takes the tracks away as well, which we don't want. We still want to see the files. So we need to make sure that this is unticked. So then when I click these little dots, it takes the channels out of the mixer, but it's still then shown in the main page. And if I then untick this little box here, it just puts the master channel back on the right hand side. And we're now not going to have the, the individual tracks shown in the mixer. So then the next step we need to look at now is to place these tracks in order so we can start to process them individually. And there's quite a few ways of doing this. So one of the things you will notice is all of the tracks are placed under each other, which is typical for any mixing environment. So if you are approaching this from a mixing perspective, you will then go through and add all of your individual tracks and they'll then be placed sequentially under each other. So when it comes to doing your mix, everything is in time. But one of the things about a mastering project is obviously you don't want this because these are all individual song files rather than track files. So we want to make sure that each of the songs are placed after the previous song is finished. So here's song one. If I then click on song two, and then what I'd want to do is either drag it here so it starts after song one is finished, or we can, in theory, we could drag this up onto track one and just have everything processed under one track. Now, one of the downsides of doing this is it just loses some flexibility. So what we could do is we could do it this way and add any individual effects to the track in an event effects format. But if you then want to start to chop up lots of different clips and things like that, it does get a bit fiddly. So for me, the way I like it set up is I like to have each of the songs in their own individual track. And I want each of the tracks to start after the previous song has finished. 
because otherwise you're just going to get an absolute garbled mess. Now I can literally click and drag and move it around this way, but it's just it's not very accurate and there are a lot better ways to do it. And this is when it comes into setting up macros. So for those who don't know what a macro is, a macro is just a combination of actions put together to make a simple process much more easier to, to do, much quicker, much more efficient. So rather than doing lots of different individual steps, you can create a macro to combine all those steps together and then just add a simple button to do all of those steps in one simple action or macro. So this is something that's very common out there for anyone who's familiar with Reaper. You can set up custom actions. In Studio One, they're called macros and they are fantastic. So the first thing we want to do is look at the macro toolbar. We can do that by clicking this button here and it says their macros arrangement. So if I click this and you'll see then we have the macro toolbar. Now this is my custom toolbar for the mastering, but we've got a global one and these are all the different macros that you can use and it's just a way of actually speeding up the process. Now I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty as to how to really create a macro because I've already covered that in a previous video and I'll set, put a link in the description down below and there'll be a little pop up at the top right hand side of the screen showing you where you can get a link to that video. So if you want to know how to create these macros then check that video out. But if we go into the macro toolbar, you'll see this little cog next to the, these are basically the different project pages, the macro pages. So if I click on this cog here and then click on macro organizer, this is going to show where all of the individual macros are and we can create new or edit them as we see fit. And the first macro I want to show you is the macro for move track in timeline. So if I just scroll down here, this is a custom macro that I've already uh, made. So if I then click on move tracking time, timeline, and then if I then click on edit, just to show you exactly what it's done. So what this is going to do is this is going to perform a series of actions just to create the process much more simpler. So what it's going to do is it's going to create a transport to loop selection. It's then going to go a transport to go to the loop end. It's then going to go navigate down and it's then going to edit and move to cursor. So the way this is basically performing is it's then going to loop the first track. It's then going to go to the loop end. It's then going to go down to the next track and it's then going to move that track to the cursor. So it's effectively just moving the tracks in sequence without you having to manually do it. So if I then click OK here, and all I then need to do is come out of this and then go to the top track. And if I then click Move Track in Timeline, you will see that each of the tracks now move in time to the end of the previous track. Simple. And then the second macro I want to show you is the Mastering Market Input. Now this is quite a... Um, quite a unique one is something that I think is really beneficial because if you are starting to master a multi-song project and if you're working with a client and you only want to you know you only want to render or send a couple of songs over to the project page or you want to send a couple of songs out to the client just to get their faults you don't really want to be rendering every single song all the time so if we then set up some markers for each of the tracks what we can then do is look to go into the, when it comes to the render page or the export page, we can export based on markers rather than based on individual tracks or by loop points, etc., etc. So you'll see here we've got this mastering market input macro. So if I then go back into our cog here, into the macro organizer, and let's just take a quick look at what that's going to do. And we want to go to our custom ones, and it's the mastering and market input and edits. And then you'll see this one's a little bit more complicated. So we start by doing some transports uh, controls. So we've got the transports, it's going to loop the selection. It's then going to go to go to loop start. So wherever I set this, it's going to loop the selection of the track. It's going to automatically go to the start of that loop. It's then going to insert a marker. It's then going to go to the end of that loop and insert another marker. And it's then going to go down to the next track. So it's in doing all of those steps in sequence just to speed up the process. So let's look at this in real time. If I click OK here, and then if I come out of this, and then if, let's go to the, if I go all the way to the left hand side of the screen, let's go to track number one. And if I then click master marker input, and you'll see then it's then all, it's added the start marker, it's added the marker at the end, and it's already selected song number two. So if I then just click it again and again and again, you'll then see that all of these have got individual markers applied to them. 
Now, if you want to go in and individually name these markers, you absolutely can. Just double click on the marker and you can actually rename the markers as you see fit. But it now it's just really created a simple way to process these files. We can go through and if we want to export individual songs, we can do so by using marker ranges rather than by individual tracks or by loop points. So this is going to make things much more simple in the long run. So these are the basic steps that I follow in every single mastering session. And this is just, just needs to be set up once. So make sure you save the template first and foremost. So that means that every time you select this template when you set up a new mastering session, it means your track inspector will open automatically, your mixer console will automatically be defaulted to the right hand side. It just makes it much simpler to set up and you know really get things moving efficiently moving forward. So you don't have to do these steps every time you do a mastering session. So then all you're realistically going to need to do is go into the song tab and import your files. Then go into your mixer console and go to your channel list here. And you just need to untick these little dots so they don't appear in the mixer console. And then once you've added your macros, you click your macros a couple of times so to move the track in timeline and then add the markers. Once you've done that, this is all set up and you can set up this mastering session in literally about two minutes, if that. Uh, it is so quick and simple to do once you've got this all set up. And then that's basically it for the mastering setup. And next stage is to go on to the mastering processing, which we'll cover in next week's video. So the last top tip is don't forget you've got the keyboard shortcuts inside the Studio One. So for example, if you don't want to show the track inspector all the time, press F4 and it just toggles the track inspector on and off. Likewise, if you don't want to show the mixer or the master channel on the right hand side all the time, just press F3 because it will then toggle the, the mixer channel on and off. So if you don't want to see the master channel all the time, just press F3 and it will then just remove that. And if you want to have a look at the uh, all the different effects, you can press F5 and it's going to toggle the effects section. So if I don't want the mixer on the right hand side, press F3, press F5 to get my effects. And then once again with Studio One, all of this is drag and drop. So just drag and drop as you see fit. And then just press F5 to close it, press F3 to open your mixer again. Fantastic. So I hope you found this video useful. Mastering in Studio One 5 really can be a breeze and make sure you use all of the features available. So if you have the professional version of Studio One 5, then be sure to use all of the features inside of the song page as well as the project page, which we will come on to in video three of this series. Be sure to check out next week's video in which we'll start to go through the mastering processes using Studio One, and then we'll take a look at the stock plugins and things like automation, clip gain envelopes, and all of those goodies to really get great sounding masters. If you'd like to know more about digital mastering, then make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tick that bell and select all to receive notifications on all of our videos moving forward. And if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to support the channel, then please see the links in the description down below. All that's left for me to say is I hope you'll keep safe and well, and I'll see you in the next video coming real soon.